When we want to learn about the evolutionary history of living organisms on Earth, which is what we're going to do in this video, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is how far do we go back in the timeline of Earth? Do we go back 4,500 million years ago? MYA, by the way, stands for million years ago. What is so significant about 4,500 million years ago? This is when scientists think the Earth was formed. Or do we go back slightly earlier? About 3,800 million years ago. What is significant about this time period, you ask? This is when life is believed to have originated on Earth. Now, keep in mind that origination and evolution are two different things. Life first originated on Earth and then from that, a lot of species later evolved. I like to start the evolutionary history of living organisms from about 3,800 to 3,500 million years ago. Why? Because it is during this time, there was something that lived on Earth that is known as the last universal common ancestor or Luca, which is a nice nickname. This Luca is believed to be the last universal common ancestor between the three domains of life. Bacteria, archaea and eukarya are the three domains of life. And this tiny microscopic unicellular organism that lived around 3800 to 3500 million years ago is believed to be the last common ancestor between bacteria, archaea and eukarya. It is from this ancestor that one lineage evolved as the bacteria, another lineage evolved as archaea and another lineage evolved as eukarya. Something that you have to remember is that a lot of evidence for the living organisms living during a certain time period in history comes from fossil evidence. For example, this nautilus was a marine organism that lived a long time back and when it fell on the ocean bed, the place where it fell sort of hardened formed the fossilized rock. Scientists can date this rock to see when this organism lived. Another thing that you need to remember is that the earth was not as it is now, billions of years ago. It was marred with a lot of mass extinction events that killed off a huge number of species. And also, early Earth was a highly anaerobic environment. So, early cells that lived during that period were also anaerobic. Oxygen was not present on Earth yet. Then what led to the evolution of aerobic organisms and the presence of oxygen on Earth that can be credited to the cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, as you know, are photosynthetic organisms that are capable of releasing oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. And as cyanobacteria began to fill up the oceans on Earth, a lot of oxygen was released. A lot of oxygen was released into the water as well. It was also released into the atmosphere. Now, because of that, a lot of these anaerobic cells that were living, they died off. But that led to something that scientists call the Great Oxidation Event, which basically filled the atmosphere with oxygen and led to even the development of the ozone layer. Now, because the ozone layer gives protection to the organisms from the harmful UV radiation, that allowed a lot of organisms to survive and evolve throughout millions of years, which led to the eventual evolution of eukaryotes. Now, you might be familiar with how eukaryotes evolved, the endosymbiosis theory. You had an early prokaryotic organism that engulfed a cyanobacteria and the cyanobacterium eventually evolved into the chloroplast and the early prokaryotic cell also engulfed an aerobic bacterium and this bacterium eventually became the mitochondria. So, from this eukaryotes, two lineages developed, one evolved into plants and the other evolved into animals. So, the evolution of eukaryotes is important in the timeline of life on earth because it allowed cells to compartmentalize their functions within the cells. So, each part of the cell could perform one function that would help the cell become more complex. So this paved the way for the eventual evolution of multicellular organisms. From these simple eukaryotes, the first algae species evolved as the marine plants. So, algae were the first plants to colonize the water. So, they also began to fill the oceans with more and more oxygen. And as more and more oxygen filled the earth and as eukaryotes got more and more complex, that led to the formation of the multicellular animals as well. So, there was a time period in history known as the Cambrian Explosion. So, this Cambrian period is when major marine animal phyla appeared on earth like arthropods, mollusks, crustaceans and even chordates that lived in water 
keep in mind that life on earth has still not moved to the land because of the evolution of eukaryotes and the eventual formation of multicellular organisms a lot of phyla began to appear on the oceans next what happened was the plants began to invade land so plants were the first organisms to invade land from the ocean they moved into the land and the early plants that invaded land were simple non vascular plants like ferns and bryophytes they invaded land and they began to spread their roots basically on land this eventually helped animals to move to land as well but before that could happen there was evolution of vertebrates in the oceans so till now these arthropods mollusks and crustaceans they were all invertebrates within the ocean there was the evolution of vertebrates as well and the first vertebrates to evolve in the ocean were jawless fishes then with the vertebrate evolution animals finally moved to land so early amphibians evolved and these amphibians were capable of living in both water and land so that's how animals slowly moved to land now when this was happening a lot of the plants were also evolving so what happened was the early plants that were non vascular they evolved into vascular seed plants so these were early gymnosperms that produced seeds and they dispersed the seeds and grew in a lot of places so when life moved to the land you could say sort of to accommodate the life on land because the animals needed something to eat right so there was sort of like a coevolution between seed plants and animals life on land so once this happened this made a lot of food available for a lot of these land animals so eventually early mammals evolved and then early reptiles evolved of course this iguana might not have been there millions of years ago this might have evolved later but early reptiles evolved along with seed plants on earth so from the reptiles came the gigantic dinosaurs which dominated the land for around 150 million years the dinosaurs were of different kinds some were herbivores some were carnivores some could fly some lived in water they had a variety of habitat and adaptations but they essentially dominated the land for around 150 million years so as dinosaurs were evolving the angiosperms also began to evolve on earth so angiosperms are flowering plants right so with the evolution of flowering plants there was also a coevolution of pollinators because the angiosperms needed somebody or something to disperse the pollen grains so that they could reproduce there was a coevolution of pollinators now this begets the question where did sexual reproduction evolve because a lot of early organisms that lived on earth were capable of reproducing only asexually but scientists are still not sure when sexual reproduction evolved on earth so the dinosaurs have dominated the land for about 150 million years and the angiosperms have also evolved but scientists believe that during this time there was a huge asteroid strike that caused the extinction of almost all dinosaur species only the avian dinosaurs that is the dinosaurs that could fly probably survived this asteroid attack but this asteroid strike caused huge environmental changes that led to the eventual extinction of all the non avian dinosaurs and because the dinosaurs then went extinct mammals began to dominate the earth so early mammals which were ancestors of the mammals that are present today they began to dominate the earth and from the avian dinosaurs the birds began to evolve so birds can be actually thought of as long lost descendants of dinosaurs now when this was happening there was also the evolution of primates now primates is the order of mammals to which even we human beings belong so the evolution of primates began on earth and these early primates were adapted to arboreal living which means they lived on trees so they were still walking on all fours and had a long tail so that they could swing from tree to tree using their hands and their tails some of those primate species some of those populations later began to evolve into the chimp human last common ancestor so this chimpanzee human last common ancestor is believed to be the last common ancestor between chimpanzees and humans this is where the lineage between chimpanzees and humans splits and that led to the eventual evolution of human beings so from this last common ancestor the bipedal australopithecus genus is believed to have evolved so australopithecus is an early genus of human being species it is not the homo genus to which humans 
organisms belong to but it is thought to be an ancestor of those homo species so this australopithecus was capable of walking on two legs which is why it is bipedal and there was an eventual loss of the tail as well so these species were suited to living on the ground so from this last common ancestor between chimps and humans and this australopithecus genus evolved the homo genus and the homo habilis is believed to be the first species in the genus of homo and these species are believed to have evolved from africa and then slowly slowly they moved from africa they migrated from africa and began to colonize the different continents now a lot of early humans are also believed to have existed like neanderthals and denisovans but that led to the eventual evolution of the modern day humans the homo sapiens we'll talk more about the evolution of human beings from their ancestors in another video but this is believed to be the most recent evolution in terms of geographical time like humans evolved much later in the timeline compared to other organisms like for example sharks in the oceans have existed way longer than trees the trees that we see today so in the geographical clock if you would think of it like that we appeared way late on earth we'll talk more about the evolution of human beings in another video but this about sums up the evolution of life on earth